Welcome to the Drummers Podcast, episode number three. Today's guest is a friend of mine called Mirna. She's a drummer living in Denver, Colorado. She does a lot of activities besides drums, and today's conversation will be about time management. So if you do like this kind of conversations, please consider about subscribing the channel and also leave the like and share your thoughts on the comments. Let's go. Hello, hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm fine. <laughs> Starting from the beginning. Yeah. Why drums? Why did uh, you start why? playing drums? Um, I think it started just with my friend's band that didn't have a drummer. And I said, oh, yeah, that's cool. Why do you guys not have a drummer? And they said, because there are not too many drummers. And that was in America. Before that, I was in the Middle East. I'm from there. Um, and they, uh, uh, we only have mainly, we play uh, hand drums. And hand drums are mainly um, for men and not for women. And so I always wanted to break cultural rules. So I played hand drums there too. Um, not professionally, because it wouldn't be something that anybody could do professionally there, really. It's very rare to be able to make money off of it. Um, but then, yeah, that kind of reminded me of the fact that women should be more involved in drumming. Um, and it's expressive physically, especially like the whole drum set is more even more physically expressive than hand drums. Um, so that's why also I went for it. Oh, and uh, do you start by taking lessons with somebody uh, you learned from the end? How old were you when you started? Uh, I was 27, maybe, um, or 28. I am now 33. Um, so I started pretty late. Yeah, it's very recent actually, but um, I don't know how I progressed quickly. And also I got so many opportunities and that pushed me to progress quickly. That's a nice thing because uh, most people don't start playing drums uh, because they think they're too late. Or some yeah. people have some excuses thinking like, oh, but uh, I just started when I was already 20 years old or something like that. So you are a perfect example of somebody that started it's not late but later than yeah it's all about what you focus on also you have to, to choose something you know in the beginning people keep telling you you have to learn jazz and you have to learn classical and you have to learn all the different things and apply them all together blah blah, blah. and some people even told me you have to learn to play the guitar and i had learned some guitar in the past and piano but um it, i mean it's not necessary unless i mean if you want to be distracted you kind of have to focus and choose what you want and for me it was like okay single stroke rolls focus on one thing and be good at it and i'm still trying to be good at that um i was in terms of arts um i was uh, a singer i sang since age i don't know six or seven in front of hundreds of people it started at like church in the beginning and people discovered that they even said when i first performed that she sounds like an adult singing even though i was a very small person I still am relatively, um, but uh, it was basically when I knew that I had a good voice and then started singing and then kind of my interest shifted towards, uh, no, I don't want to sing. I don't really, that's not my preference. I wanted to be more expressive physically um, as I grew older. And um, I think that was my background more like in terms of the arts. Other than that, I've been doing science for 15 years and I have two master's degrees in science and engineering. Um, and I still do science professionally, um, so I do both, I guess. Now you are, you are, you have like the the perfect connection between science and arts, with, between what what is mathematic and what is more, what is more from the mind and what is more from the art. From the heart, do exactly. You, do you think that um, if that uh, scientific side inside you helped you to improve on drums? and be more uh, disciplined yeah. or something like that? Yeah, I think just going to graduate school, which graduate school in America, it means when you go for a master's degree or PhD, um, going to graduate school made me feel like super independent. Um, and like, I have to finish tasks. I have to know how to do that. Also, it was a foreign language. So there was multiple, like multitudes of challenges and understanding how to live in this country. So just when you go through challenges in life, you learn how to get things done and time management and how to learn in general. Um, so I think, yeah, just learning how to learn helped me with learning music and being dedicated there made me dedicated in music. And it's just an attitude. I think it transfers um, everywhere. And then your success in music kind of gives you confidence to succeed in science and vice versa. 
Uh, when awesome. you start playing drums, uh, did you start it by yourself or did you find out some teacher or some somebody that could help you in that? Um, I posted on Facebook to my friends if someone has a drum set to try out and then one of my friends responded and I went to his house um, and he made me play on his drum set and he wasn't like, I'm going to teach you rudiments. It was like, hey, here's a music that I know you know and try to play along to it. And then I played um, and he said that he um, had, can you still see my video? Yeah, Actually, yeah, yeah. It kind of yeah um it went away for a second yeah so he said play along and then he said you think i think you have like some good sense for how to follow rhythm because i was trained since childhood for those things just not the drum set um and that's how it kind of started then i started taking um contacting my favorite drummers and see which one responds and a few of them did actually um some of them it took them a year to respond um but eventually they did and a lot of them became my best friends and um, mentors too. Um, so that's kind of how I learned and some things I learned by myself. What about that connection? So do you do you start by asking some doubts that you have about the drums or you just like uh, started to talk with them about drums generally speaking? Um, some of them it started with, hey, you know how to play this and that, can you teach it to me? Like if it was a blast beat or if it was uh, like an odd time signature or something like polar than like Marco Miniman. I think I noticed that he played a lot of those things that are more complex mathematical things. And I messaged him and then I think it took him nine months or a year until he saw my message. Um, and then now we're friends. And I even had, he gave me the opportunity to play on his drum set in front of a, a whole full sold out show. And I didn't know, surprisingly. Wow. He's like, just jump on it, play. Um, which is like the biggest most uh, my favorite moment maybe in life that was it um where was it? and so yeah where was it it was in denver colorado oh where you live now right yeah yeah and he was here for tour and so i was just you know hanging out with them and then he said come here and i'm like what am i gonna do he's like sit down and i played and it was such a moment it was awesome to play with him and all um the band i mean to play on his drum set and the band um, it was a privilege for sure. But yeah, that's how I started. I always ask them for what something that they know to do very well, and then they teach it to me. And people like Derek Roddy, for example, I started kind of noticing that he gives advice for people about the business. So I kind of, I know he is the like, in my opinion, maybe the best, the best uh, metal, extreme metal drummer in the world. Um, but also his information was more valuable in terms of giving me advice for the business side of things, like what are the things that I should do and shouldn't do. And he always said good advice to me. Like, for example, whatever you do, never go backwards. If you start getting paid as a musician, don't start taking gigs that don't pay you. Um, if you start getting bigger gigs, don't take smaller ones, um, and don't waste your time. So a lot of advice similar to that. He was very willing to give me any advice about the practice routine. Practice routine? No, it's kind of what I learned on from a combination of people, seeing people and my own thing too, is sometimes you have to give some rest to your muscles. It's don't overkill, like don't overdo it. Um, I understand the obsession, but also you are a biological existence like organism um, and <laughs> you need to give a break to these cells and tissues and uh, to recover and then you go back. Sometimes it's better than where you started. Um, so that's kind of what I learned with time about practice routines. Just don't overdo it. So what about your uh, travels around the world, the places you lived? Mm -hmm. So you're originally from Middle East, right? Mm -hmm. uh, where exactly? In Iraq. Okay. And then from yeah. then you moved to? Colorado. America, to right. Colorado. And I stayed here for 10 years. <laughs> and uh, was it with family or was it by yourself? It was by myself. I was doing my second master's degree um, and then I couldn't go back home because I am from a very small ethno-religious minority. Um, I am not a religious person, but I was from a religion back home. Um, it was a Catholic group and it was uh, the language was Aramaic, so we were a different ethnicity. Um, and the majority was, you know, a different ethnicity than what we are. So um, unfortunately, terrorist groups took over it. And I wasn't able to go back home, but everybody was safe. Like the whole family was safe. Every, everybody was okay. Um, not to worry everybody, but that's the story of why I stayed. Um, it wasn't safe to go back. It's a, it's a, a the second time we have uh, this kind of uh, 
uh, expert mention on the podcast because we talked with Zed from Axis. Um, yeah. Yes. So we also talked about the Middle East and the re religious um, issues sometimes with, with, with music and with, in this yeah. case, was with metal music. Yes. Uh, what about Colorado? Uh, you, you are from Denver? I am close to Denver, yes. W what about the music scene there? Is it difficult to be a drummer in a place like that, in a city like that? or? Oh my God, no. It's the easiest thing to be a drummer. It's hard to make money. But thankfully, the, the reason why it's hard to make money is because there's so much talent. But then you have to be unique. There's so many ways. Uh, I think there are certain ways to be unique, but some of them are privileges, I guess. Um, basically, some things you're born with, some things are your circumstances. For example, someone that had, had taken lessons since age five may, or whatever, 15, may have uh, better opportunities. Someone that knows people here that grew up here may have more opportunities, but also, hey, I'm new and... I was able to find these opportunities somehow. Yes, people will say she's a woman and she's Middle Eastern and she looks different and she's playing metal, so it's kind of unique. Sure, I think it is unique. Like when you look at someone, you're like, oh, you kind of don't belong here, but yeah, let me see. And then it's, it is a privilege that I have, but also there's some disadvantages that I have too. Um, for example, not being from the country and not being from the scene in Denver and being relatively new. Um, but yeah, there's always, you can always look at the positive and, and negative side. So yeah, there's a lot of chances here to make it, but my opportunities did not come from Denver. I would say most of them came from online, being present online and putting myself out there. Um, that's mainly it. If you had to choose between YouTube, Facebook or Instagram to promote you just as a drummer, which mm -hmm. one do you think it works better? Instagram. Uh, Instagram. Do you think it's also a, a, a good place for, no matter where, you, where are you living, to connect with other musicians in town? I think so, yeah. I think it's the best. Um, Facebook is good too, but I feel like the demographics of Instagram is very diverse, um, of ages and people from all over the world. Like Facebook was kind of starting to die off. There were certain groups of age that were starting to not join it. Versus Instagram has everybody. TikTok has a reputation of being like silly joke content, blah, 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 which you can still put a, a blast beat in a funny content and get a quarter of a million views or a million views like one of my videos. And, but yeah, I feel like Instagram is more the best option, I think. I have a, a question for you that I, I believe <laughs> it will be very, very important for people that will listen. You are the perfect example that you... You probably have to to go to the the college uh, for your day or even working in, in something and then you have to so you have to plan your day you have to have time for yeah. everything and also for drums do you mm -hmm, go to mm -hmm. drums every day or do you choose like three days per week or how does that work yeah uh, previously when i just started i was doing drums every day And then when I kind of started getting better at it, I did it like and started understanding also that I need time for recovery. Um, I started switching, you know, feet versus hand exercises and then um, like one day feet, one day hands um, so that I don't exhaust the same muscles, kind of like going to the gym, um, especially if you're doing like kind of uh, endurance exercises. And then afterwards, now I don't do drums every day. I just do what I need to practice when I can. Um, it could be three, four days a week, whatever, sometimes just the evenings or every other evening of the week. Um, so, yeah, it just ends up being um, hours or days through the week, depending on what events I'm preparing for. And um, do you plan what to practice before you go to the practice session? Uh, yeah, well, now I can practice at home. Um, most of the last few years I've been able to practice at home and there is places where I have to go to access an acoustic drum set. Um, so I plan, yes, I plan what I want to do. Sometimes I just want to record a few videos on my phone and share them with people. And sometimes I need to prepare for, uh, you know, now for, for the tour, you know, I'm preparing things. And sometimes I want to record the video and send them to my bandmates to see if they have any comments about it or if we're changing some parts. Um, So yeah, I usually plan what I'm doing. And what about motivation, which is the main topic of the of the podcast? There's moments where I'm like, this is so hard. I can't do it. Sometimes in the beginning, I used to question myself because 
I don't know. I used to see people commenting and until this day they comment that oh she sucks, she's bad. And some people say uh, she sped up her videos, you know. So it's a combination of people thinking I'm overperforming and other people thinking I'm underperforming. So when I saw the combination, I started thinking to myself, okay, stop having doubts. I'm not perfect, but there's a reason why some people like me and I will continue doing it for those people. So I think yeah, there's maybe little like moments of doubts. But what keeps me going is the people that say, I watch your videos and I want to be playing the drums or I watch it and it makes me smile. Um, and I remember that's why we do this for. Also, I have my teacher and mentor that always tells me like, don't give up, like what is happening? It, it, there's moments where I'm like, this is so hard, I can't do it. And he's like the one that's picking me up and telling me to not stop. Like, look where, how far you've gone through the years and you can't stop. Okay. So uh, my current teacher and mentor is Eugene Ryavchenko. Oh, um, yeah. He's Ukrainian um, and he lives in Vienna, Austria. I and so yeah too. exactly so that's how I, I think maybe that's how i found him maybe through like drum technique academy if you know what that is yeah yeah yeah. um it's like an online academy and then um that's how we knew each other but yeah it's been years maybe almost two years and a half or three uh, and yeah he's been the person i would say that motivates me when it's like super hard mentally to keep going <laughs> and what about the portuguese how do you learn it Ah, Portuguese, I learned uh, only from chatting with my friends. Actually, it took me maybe less than a year to be able to have conversations. And that's because it's similar to English. I think it's close to It's not like super close, but like compared to Ukrainian that I'm learning now, it's You're more easy to learn. Ukrainian. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> how do you find time for everything? I, I know, know, right? It's time management. It's like see, how it to... <laughs> a surprise for me when we talked in uh, in uh, Anaheim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was I was talking with you in English and he said like, "Well, you can you can speak in Portuguese if you want." And I was like, "What? She yes. speaks Portuguese too?" <laughs> yes. I I am known as the Brazilian drummer. And I'm not Brazilian, but I'm Brazilian in my heart and I love Brazil. I love the culture and that's why I learned and I love so many people. Um and that's in, from that country I have amazing friends. And so that's why I learned. And uh, about the Ukrainian, um, how, the, how are you learning? Are you learning um, talking with friends too? Yeah, talking with my friends um, also. And yeah, just online, watching TV, like not real TV, YouTube um, episodes. There was a few lessons I took from someone online, but it didn't continue um, because I didn't want to be committed to lessons. And I kind of figured the way to learn without lessons is by connecting with people, finding a group of people that's local, meeting with them, or finding a person online and talking to them. Um, thankfully, my uh, friends and my teacher also talks Ukrainian, and so I learned from all of them. <laughs> One final question, which is, let me think, because I have a lot of it, so, but I don't want to ask it all because I don't want to take <laughs> all of your time. I know that you're a busy person. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay, I have some time here. Um, so, since we talked about NAM, why not? Uh, yeah. Was it your first NAM? No, it was maybe my fifth or fourth now. This was my first one. But many mm. people there told me that he used to be bigger and more fancy for dramas. And they said mm. that it was amazing and it was a good experience, but it's kind of uh, still growing after COVID. It went, uh, it went down a lot. Uh, do you mm. share the same opinion? I don't because they are there to see gear and I'm not there to see gear and drums. I am there to make connections and speak to people. And by make connections, I don't only mean by with a business intention. I mean, the people that I met last year, I, I really feel excited to see this year. Like, I can't wait to see you next year, you know? People that I like and see and connect with, I want to see them again. And it's like a tradition and every year it becomes better and better. If there's zero drum set in that place, but my friends are there, I will still go. That's <laughs> and great. so, I mean, it's possible that I will be there next year, living there in the area, hoping hoping to, to move. But um, uh, if I'm not moved yet, I will go for sure. I'll make time for it and I'll go. Uh, I want to ask you to end it with your pages and for people to follow you and see your work. Awesome. My page name on Instagram is Drumbitious Mirna. That's D R U M B I T I O U S. And then uh, underscore Mirna, M I R N A. That's the same on all the platforms YouTube, TikTok, Facebook page. Um, it's all the same one. Where can we find you playing live? 
Um, I'll be playing next show is on Saturday, April 6th. Uh, it will be in Fort Collins, Colorado. So that's Northern Colorado. Um, also close, relatively close to Denver. And then May 17th and 22nd, um, I, as of today, I've learned I have some other shows, but I, I will share more details about them. Um, and then July, I'll be in Europe. Uh, I'll be in Slovenia and um, Tolmanator Festival in Tolman. Um, and I think there's going to be a good group of bands, Testament and Exodus and Behemoth, uh, maybe Behemoth. Yeah, actually, that's accurate. Um, <laughs> and then by the end of uh, maybe hopefully in August, we will we'll announce more um, shows, hopefully that's internationally. Great. I'll be yeah. I'll be touring around Europe in July too, so maybe with a metal band too. So maybe we. Oh can, my god! Yeah. <laughs> maybe so, we'll, we'll find you somewhere. <laughs> which we don't have all of the the shows Dates. already announced, uh, but uh, we do have the Kazakh Republic one. Will be announced more, and probably we'll play in the same one. It, it, it would be an amazing thing to find you on the road. Oh my god, that would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Let's oh, hope for awesome. that. Uh, let's Do you know talking. what day? What yeah, day is it's, it? It's uh, 24. Let me check. Okay, 20 of July. 20th of July. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Uh, our Slovenia show is on the 26th of July. So I will probably try to be in Europe before that and after that. So hopefully yeah. we'll find you there. <laughs> I'll be around Kazakh Republic between the 18th and the 22. So... Mm -hmm. I'll spend there five days at least and we'll be around that in the van. So that's awesome. <laughs> that's exciting. It's amazing. <laughs> Thanks, Eduardo. Amazing. Thank you, Mirna. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. That was it for today. I hope you find some motivation out of these conversations I'm having. If you do, please consider to subscribe to the channel because we'll have more guests very, very soon. Share your thoughts on the comments and see you on the next episode.